Hi, I'm Josh and today I'm going to show you how to build a tandoor oven at home for under £50. To build your home tandoor you will require an 85 litre metal bin with a lid. Make sure you get one without holes in. Two 30 centimetre terracotta stone flower pots. One terracotta stone flower pot dish. 50 litres of perlite or vermiculite installation. Seven paving blocks or bricks a small pot of fire cement, a few handfuls of stones or pebbles, small oven tray to collect charcoal, and long flat metal skewers. Links to suppliers of these materials are in the description. I'll keep it up to date, but if you find cheaper suppliers, please comment so I can update and others can easily find supplier. You will also require an electric drill, masonry drill bits, I use D-Wall Extreme Masonry, a disc cutter or saw and a hole cutter that is optional but it's useful. First drill the holes required for ventilation and debris removal. Using a hole cutter or by drilling lots of small holes in a circle cut about 6 to 10 centimeters hole in the center of the metal bin. This is where the air will rise and debris will drop into your collection pot. Place the plant pot on a suitable surface and drill six more ventilation holes around the centre. I used a 4mm bit followed by an 8mm then 10mm to ensure the pot didn't crack. Now place the drilled plant pot centre onto the saucer and using a pencil mark the position of the holes. Remove the pot and drill matching holes in the saucer. For the centre hole I used a hole cutter but again you can drill a number of small holes in, in a circle then gently tap to knock it out. Mark a line around the bottom of your other pot, around 4 cm from the base, either using a disc cutter or a saw. Carefully cut around the edge until they separate. Don't try to cut straight through in one go. Go around the edge, making a deeper cut each time. I recommend you wear eye protection and some sort of face mask and ear defenders as it was extremely loud and dusty. Start by placing your debris tray on the floor where you want your home tandoor. Then place four blocks of bricks around the side and back to steady the bin. Place your bin on top of the blocks and make sure you have enough room to remove the debris collection tray and that the bin is secure and cannot fall forwards. Place three of the blocks or bricks in a triangle pattern in the base of the bin. Make sure they are touching each other and do not cover the ventilation debris hole. Add a handful of stone or pebbles around the back of all the blocks to secure them. Make sure they come to the top of the blocks but are level as possible. Place the saucer in the centre of the blocks ensuring the centre hole is over the cut out of the bin itself. Place the first flower pot with the holes drilled in it on the top saucer and align the holes. Fill the sides with the perlite or vermiculite insulation to about 5cm below the top of the pot. This just ensures it held steady so far. Using fire or oven cement, add a small bead around the top of the pot. This helps to bring things together and ensure the heat doesn't escape through any big gaps in the pots. Place your last flower pot upside down with the end you have cut facing up and press carefully onto the oven cement. Make sure both pots are perfectly aligned. Fill the outside with more perlite or vermiculite insulation and tap the sides gently to settle in all the cracks. Smooth off any excess oven cement inside for a neat finish. Coat the inside of the tandoor with some oil, any kind will do, and coat in the top half inside. You can also add a little yoghurt if you have some. This will dry as you do your first warm up and seal the top to allow things like your nans to be removed easier. You could also use a wash of salt and water. After priming, everything will be well sealed. Nans will not fall off into the coals, yet will not stick so much that you cannot remove them. Now it's time to prime your oven ready for use. The first time a tandoor is used, the temperature must be gradually increased to condition the interior of the oven. This step is crucial in ensuring the life of the tandoor. Conditioning can be done by starting a very small fire and slowly adding fuel to gradually increase the amount of heat inside the tandoor. Hairline cracks might form during conditioning. This is normal and will not interfere with the performance of the tandoor oven. 
When the oven cools off, the hairline cracks will barely be noticeable. They are essential in allowing the clay body of the tandoor to breathe. The slower the temperature inside the tandoor is increased during its first use, the fewer hairline cracks will develop. For the first warm-up, about six lumps of wood or charcoal will be sufficient. Before use, always remove the charcoal from the bottom of the tandoor and ensure the ventilation holes are clear. You can add your lump wood charcoal directly into the base, light with a natural fire lighter, such as wood, wool and allow to grey over before cooking. I find it easier to use a barbecue starter chimney to stack up the charcoal first then empty into the tandoor once glowing hot. If you have any tips and helpful suggestions for others, please comment below and I'll add them to the build description, both here and on my website with the relevant credits. Please take a moment to like and subscribe and check out this build and curry recipes on my website at thecurrykid.co.uk.